Thank you. Thank you very much for, to Stefano and the organizers for the invitation. And um, so I would like to discuss uh, the thermodynamics of uh, one-dimensional maps. So I will basically uh, concentrate uh, most of the talk on uh, quasi-quadratic maps. Uh, so these are maps which are, say, smooth with a generic critical point, a unique generic critical point of this form. I will assume it's say, infinity to simplify most of the time. And um, perhaps I will assume uh, transitive on some interval. And I will also consider at the same time, um, uh, say, polynomial maps, quadratic or polynomial uh, like maps. So this is some map which is defined in some domain U, which is compactly contained in some bigger domain, which is the image of the map in such a way that this map is a, a holomorphic and proper map. And proper, and uh, I will assume mainly for simplicity that there is a unique critical point Uh, which is of quadratic type. So uh, this is the class of maps I would like to discuss. Both I will discuss both at the same time. Just refer to them as quasi-quadratic maps. And um, so I want to discuss the thermodynamic formalism. So this geometric pressure function. which is defined for parameter beta. Uh, so it's the pressure of F at beta is the supremum over all invariant measures defined on the Julia set. So here I forgot to mention the maximal invariant set uh, of this map is the field in Julia set. And uh, field Julia set. And the Julia set here is just the boundary of K. And it's F is always transitive on this uh, set. So we have basically a unique piece where the dynamics is uh, more interesting. And uh, this pressure function is, as usual, this, uh, the supremum over all invariant measures of the measure theoretic entropy. And the uh, integral of, so minus beta times the integral of log df, which I will, so this part I will write as sometimes as the Lyapunov exponent of f, maybe perhaps spare it this way. So f of mu with respect to f is the uh, Lyapunov exponent. And uh, I measure mu is a, an equilibrium. state or a Gibbs measure if uh, the supremum is attained. OK. 
Okay. So, um, so the pressure function appears, so the motivation is that it appears naturally when studying some multifractal spectra and as well in some large deviations uh, rate functions. Um, so I want to discuss the uh, properties of this, uh, of this pressure function. And there is this theorem that Felix mentioned this morning. that says uh, basically uh, that this function is uh, very nice in most cases. So without any further assumption, just transitivity, we know that, uh, in fact, in greater generality, that this function uh, is, in fact, real analytic, except at most at two points. So these are the so-called phase transitions. So here we have one line uh, in the negative part and another line here. So this is parameter maybe beta. And here is minus beta of some number that I didn't define yet. And the pressure function uh, is some convex function above these two lines. And here, uh, this asymptotic slope, uh, which is given essentially by chi inf, this function, this number chi inf is the infimum of uh, Lyapunov exponents. And the other asymptotic slope is uh, given by the supremum of Lyapunov exponents. So the theorem says that the worst that can happen is that maybe the graph of this function uh, touches at some point this line, and then it becomes automatically equal to this line. Same here. So let me just draw a picture and, uh, of the worst case. Uh, this is when there is some parameter beta minus, some parameter beta plus. And outside this uh, in, uh, interval in the middle, the function is just linear. It coincides with the two, these two slopes. And in between is real analytic. So P of f is uh, real analytic. on the interval b minus b plus. But in fact, uh, it's more than that. So what's really going on is that um, for each beta in here, there is actually a unique, so there is a pretty good understanding of, of uh, uh, equilibrium states, Gibbs measures. There is a unique equilibrium state. It depends holomorphically on beta. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So it's really uh, very, very nice uh, in this part. And we also know uh, more or less when these uh, transitions happen. So for example, when there is some lack of uniform, of non-uniform hyperbolicity, we know that there is a phase transition at the first zero of the pressure function. This is the hyperbolic dimension. And uh, we also know there are some cases where there can be a phase transition after uh, the first zero of pressure. There are some examples like that. And we, we have some at least very rough understanding of when uh, this function lacks to be real analytic. Yeah. Yeah, so beta is fixed, and for each beta, you take the supremum over all measures of this uh, number. Yeah, but then beta is what is the maximum beta? So uh, you are, you're maximizing a, a different uh, functional. So 
if, if you want, you can uh, forget about the, the beta in some sense, and you can think of that uh, for each mu, you have a line, and you're taking the supremum of all of these lines, and you get this convex function. It's another way to see it. Set. OK. Yes. Right. Uh, is it possible to have something like this where you don't have a line of you know, this is a line minus plus beta and sub? Yeah. Is it going to be or is it those both lines that necessary for the Uh so here so I'm not saying this is the asymptote, I'm just saying this is the asymptotic slope. Yeah. So if there are examples where actually this is not the asymptote. Okay. And I think the same happens on the, on the negative spectrum. There are examples. So I'm, I'm not saying it's the asymptote. I'm just saying it's the asymptotic slope. OK. Did you say that when you touch this, you mean when you touch this line or when you touch any? No, that line. That line. The, this line that goes through 0. And so, so the it's connection with two times those, those two other uh, Yeah. Right, right. So, so there are essentially t three kinds of uh, phase transitions. One in the negative spectrum, this we know very well. There's work of Makarov and Smirnov, and basically you can remove it. So you change uh, slightly the potential in some way. There's a trick, and you get a, a nice analytic function. So that's removable in some sense. And uh, for the positive part, there are two types of phase transitions: high temperature, where uh, this beta plus is at the first zero. And the second type of phase transition is when um, you have low temperature, and that's a different kind of phenomenon. So, so the first one you can characterize because it's a lack of expansion. It's really where the infimum of Lyapunov exponents is zero. So in fact, this line would be horizontal. And the other one is when this uh, uh, chi sup is positive, is that corresponds to the Cole Eggman case. And it happens, there are examples where you can also have a phase transition in that case. Okay? So, okay, so this is the result I want to somehow, this is the background. And what I want, would like to discuss is somehow the next step, which is the case of phase transitions of infinity. So from now on, I'm, I will assume there are no phase transitions in the, in the positive spectrum. So we get some nice analytic function. This implies, in particular, uh, this slope is actually strictly negative. So we are in the Kolegman case. And the question, so is, uh, so this phase transition at infinity or chaotic temperature dependence, so it's the problem of whether the Gibbs state uh, converges so that's the problem I want to discuss today and I should say I've been using without saying so usually in a statistical mechanic, this uh, beta is the inverse of temperature. So of course here, it doesn't mean anything. It's just a formalism. And um, so this corresponds to uh, the case where temperature is going to zero, and we want to discuss. I mean, the problem is to understand what's the limit. So of course, it would be very nice to um, know that we have a limit because the limit measure would be an approximation for the low temperature Gibbs, uh, Gibbs measures, right? So that would be uh, very nice. And um, so before going to the results, the, the known results, uh, there is a, a very important remark. 
So observations. which is uh, a very simple observation that goes back to a paper of Einzmann and, uh, and Liev that says the following. So as we increase uh, beta, this uh, part, the Lyapunov exponent, become, uh, becomes more and more important. So somehow Gibbs measures will tend to concentrate on measures that minimize Lyapunov exponents. Okay? So this, so this will be very important in, in, in what follows. Uh, okay, so any limit measure, so any accumulation of mu beta minimizes Uh, the Lyapunov exponent. And also, uh, there is a second remark. Oh, mu beta, yeah, if I didn't define it. So it's the unique, sorry. So, okay, I'm assuming there are no phase transitions. And this implies that for every beta positive, there is a unique you write it this way, there's a unique uh, Gibbs measure uh, at temperature one over beta that I'm denoted by mu b. So it's the, it's the Gibbs measure at beta, and we, the problem is to understand what's the behavior of this measure uh, when beta goes to infinity. Okay, that's somehow the last. Uh, type of pathology that uh, could happen. OK, so uh, any accumulation point, so this is a very important remark. So any accumulation points of these Gibbs measures will be uh, Lyapunov minimizing measure. And uh, more than that, so if we look at this graph, I mean, you can, well, more, more or less uh, understand that once we know that it minimizes, this term is the same, so it's the minimal. Uh, measured. Moreover, you can say that among those that minimize the Lyapunov exponent, the limit measures will tend to favor uh, higher entropy. So limits uh, also maximize entropy among those that minimize the Lyapunov exponent. Right. Or all invariant probability measures, yes. And moreover, maximizes entropy among Lyapunov uh, uh, minimizing okay so this these are really really important in, in what follows So yes and no. So we will see it's more complicated, especially when you have a critical point. But that's basically the idea. So the first place to look at would be those that minimize the Lyapunov exponent. You would get maybe a compact set of measures. And among those, you look at those that maximize uh, the measure theoretic entropy. And that's your uh, one bet of where, where to look. However, there are very simple cases uh, where there are many such. And somehow, for some reason, the pressure, this gives measures favor one among these many. And it's really sometimes mysterious to know which one of those is really the limit. Um, yeah, may maybe I will comment more on this. OK, so that's a very important remark. Uh, and first of all, so. This minimizing property is very nice because there is, uh, it makes this connection with this uh, ergodic optimization. Uh, 
which is uh, the setting where you fix some function and you try to maximize the integral among all invariant measures. And there is a sequence of articles going to infinity that uh, deal with this problem. So there's a lot of things going on. And uh, so what I want to do is to extract some of those results that are known for the symbolic case to deduce some, some results uh, for the smooth case here. So maybe I will. here. So, so let me discuss first the case, uh, uniformly hyperbolic case. And actually, we'll just restrict to uh, Lyapunov, uh, sorry, to uniform expanding maps of the circle, just to simplify the discussion. And there is a very uh, recent uh, result of Contreras that if you combine with a very well-known trick, so Contreras' result is on a symbolic setting, and there is this trick to uh, sometimes you can pick a function. So there's no derivative here, and the, he just considers any function. And there's this trick to realize any holder continuous function as the derivative of an expanding map. So if you do this, you can take this very nice uh, theorem of Contreras, and you get this result uh, that says uh, that for a generic uh, circle expanding map of class C1 plus Lipschitz, uh, these Gibbs measures actually converge to a periodic measure. And, well, somehow, unfortunately, uh, at least I don't see any way to extend this to higher regularity. So he really, really uses, at some point, the Lipschitz regularity to... Um, well, at least I don't see a way to adapt it to get uh, something for higher regularity. And for whatever it's worth, I want to conjecture here. So, oh, yeah, so he, he proves that in this case there will be a unique uh, Lyapunov minimizing measure, which happens to be a periodic measure, so it must converge there. Right, and, there is the, and that's the only one, so entropy is zero, right. Sorry? Oh, just uh, an equidistributed measure on a periodic orbit. Okay. Okay, so conjecture for hunch, whatever. So I would like to uh, see what happens in the analytic case. And maybe, so let me say that for, so it's a conjecture, so I can say whatever I want. So for a real analytic, uh, circle expanding map, uh, there is convergence. There is only vague evidence. I will say it very quickly for those that know. So first, there is this uh, very beautiful result of Raymond in the symbolic case where he shows that if you have any potential that has finite image, so it only takes a finite number of values, then uh, you automatically have uh, convergence. And uh, the proof uh, uses uh, his original proof is based on some sub-analytic uh, machinery. So basically, uh, the equilibrium states in this case are defined by a finite number of functions. He shows they have a very nice regularity at infinity, and, and that actually uh, this implies the convergence at the end. 
And there is another loose uh, source of uh, motivation for this, which is in the, um, so there is this model in the statistical mechanics, uh, the, the XY model. So <clears throat> there is, a, if you Google this, you might get a model agency in Colombia, but it's not that one. So this is some uh, model in, in statistical mechanics where uh, your states are belong to some to circles now. So you, it's like the symbolic case, except that now instead of having finitely many states, you have a circle of states. And there is uh, so it's the simplest case where you have a nearest neighbor interaction, which is given by some analytic uh, by, by some function, continuous function on the circle. And um, there are examples where uh, of say infinity interactions that give uh, divergence, but for the analytic case, you do have convergence. So that's actually not very difficult. It's really straightforward to, to see. So that's somehow some loose evidence that uh, this might have a chance of being true. Sorry? So the interaction, so it's a nearest neighbor interaction, uh, which is given by some, uh, so it's symmetric. So you pick some function u on, S, uh, on S1, and you evaluate on the difference. Yeah, of Gibbs measure. So for this guy, uh, by Ralph's theorem, for every beta, you have a unique Gibbs measure. Yeah, right, right, right. So you take a box and uh, take a limit, uh, blah, blah, blah. So uh, what happens here is that the Gibbs measure is very explicit. So after you do some transformation, it's just a Bernoulli measure that you can describe very explicitly in terms of this function u. And you can prove by hand that uh, you have convergence in the if u is analytic in that case. OK. And uh, so there is another example that you can uh, cook up here, transfer to this hyperbolic case. So there is this example by Schatz and Hochmann. So in the symbolic case, they uh, found some Lipschitz uh, function, some Lipschitz potential, so that um, you do have divergence in this case. So there is a phase transition at infinity. And um, so they did a very concrete potential where basically they constructed some uh, shift, sub-shift, uh, very explicitly. And they took just the minus the distance function to, to that. And you, by doing some calculations, you can more or less estimate the Gibbs measures, and you can prove by hand they, they oscillate. Now, there is a simpler uh, example uh, that was by Coronel and myself, where um, it's much, it is much, uh, so it's more qualitative in nature. You have to do less computations, and it's more flexible in some sense. And you can adapt this example to get the following. So just by adapting the, the, the similar example. So there is a say infinity uh, circle expanding map. so that you have divergence as beta goes to infinity. So a, a result that like this would really uh, complement this in some way. So you could, uh, it would show that this is the right, I mean, that's the right regularity to have uh, convergence. So perhaps I want to, uh, so I will 
give a very brief idea of the proof of this uh, result. So let me just go to the symbolic case. So, so the idea is just to use this uh, Eisenman give uh, observation as follows. So suppose you have in your symbolic space, you have some first uh, shift uh, set invariant compact set x minus and x plus. Maybe I want to put it here. So two compact invariant sets, which are disjoint. And suppose that uh, you have some function, which will be our potential, so that the supremum is attained So it attains its supremum in uh, the union. So uh, this principle would say that all of the limit measures will be supported in the union of x minus and x plus, right? But in fact, there's this second part that says that Actually, if, it, if we would have that the topological entropy of one is bigger than the other, actually, all of the limit, all of the accumulation measures will be concentrated on x plus by the variational principle, right? So, and uh, we could revert this very easily. So now if we take a compact invariant set, say x1 minus, contained in x0 uh, minus, and we take x1 plus contained in x0 plus, uh, and we add, say, indicator functions, so maybe we are careful and put this uh, closed open set, so we could add indicator function of the union, so by just adding a very small proportion of the indicator function, we will know that in fact the accumulation points will all be contained in the smaller sets, but if we now revert the inequality, so we choose these subsets so that the opposite is true. So now, uh, as soon as we change epsilon from zero to anything positive, we know that the uh, equilibrium measures will be supported on the other part. So they will be supported now on the minus part. So in this way, if we take epsilon very, very small, for a long time, they will be close to the plus part because they will tend to follow the higher entropy that is here. And as soon as uh, the epsilon gets more weight, as temperature goes to zero, they will be concentrated on, this, uh, on the negative part. So in this way, you can shift the low temperature Gibbs measures from one side to the other and if we repeat infinite, this infinitely many times, you can actually get uh, some measure that, some potential that will oscillate between these two, uh, these two sides and you get divergence at the end. Okay. But actually, I think there is a better uh, way to describe what's going on. So, and that's uh, in the title of my the talk, there's in fact this uh, sensitive dependence that you can more or less feel here. So it's sensitive dependence. So, 
So that example is more or less saying that if we draw beta here and we think we are in a graph of the space of measures, so we have maybe this uh, gives measures that are oscillating. But in fact, what, something that describes this better is that uh, by a very small perturbation here, so as soon as you take any positive epsilon, you can uh, have a very drastic change on the behavior of the low temperature Gibbs measure. So that's really the, the, what's going on here. So by, a very, by perturbing slightly the, um, the potential or the map, you can get a significant change in the behavior of the uh, Gibbs measures. Uh, and it's very much like uh, the notion we have in uh, dynamics, where you have a very cha a small change in the initial condition can have a big effect at the end. So let me state uh, this uh, in a more precise way. So actually, we, we get the following. So, so actually, there is a, a C infinity circle expanding map. F not, so that the following happens. So if you choose any sequence of temperatures going to infinity, Uh, we can actually perturb. There is a small perturbation so that we have divergence. So these are the Gibbs measures for the perturbed map. So by just being a little bit more careful with this construction, you can get divergence in, along any sequence of temperatures going to zero. So great, I have five minutes and I uh, just finished with the introduction. So what I wanted to discuss is these quadratic maps. So the uh, so the thing is that we, we know these examples. We are using these BAM functions and so on to get uh, some very complicated behavior for smooth maps. But the question uh, remains of what happens when you have real analytic maps or holomorphic maps, which are very rigid and we cannot uh, change uh, things um, locally. This much more delicate situation. And uh, the deal is that, um, well, since the simplest case is difficult, let's go to a more complicated case. And we consider then these quasi-quadratic maps. So and in that case, we do manage to get some examples. And I hope to have some time to explain uh, what's the idea behind the, the example. So, so there is a real analytic uh, quasi-quadratic map zero having a sensitive dependence of Gibbs measures. So the same as here, except that now that we are 
in the space of uh, quadratic maps. So I will finish by explaining what's the idea and maybe comparing these two, these two results, the circle expanding case with smooth maps and these quadratic maps. So we can actually have both cases. So, so there is such an F0 where we have convergence, and there is another one where we have divergence. But uh, what, it, what this is saying is that by, if you prescribe any sequence of temperatures going to zero, uh, by perturbing the map with a, a relatively small perturbation, you can get divergence along that sequence. So it's really very sensitive on the behavior is really that sensitive on the map itself. Well, so that's the uniformly hyperbolic case, which I think is, uh, as I said, that's the difficult case. Difficult. Yes. So I'm assuming uh, there is transitivity, so the critical point is involved in the dynamics. So this is, so this is the more or less what I wanted to address here in this conjecture. So I would expect, uh, in that case that you mentioned, that we have convergence. But I don't know. That seems difficult. OK. So let me uh, give you an idea. So, uh, so very roughly, uh, the motivation for, for this idea comes from an example of Kovbauer and Keller, they constructed a physical measure of a quadratic map uh, which is supported on a repelling fixed point. So heuristically, at least, uh, you have uh, the following idea. So they, they somehow managed to show that to construct a quadratic map that uh, in such a way that most of the mass follows the orbit of the critical point, and um, they uh, ensure that most of the time the critical point is near a repelling fixed point. So it will land very close to the uh, repelling fixed point and will spend a lot of time trying to get out of it to only return afterwards and so on. So, but the trick, the main point is that they, they ensure that most of the mass is following the critical orbit. So here, we somehow manage to uh, do the same, but at low temperature. So um, we, we found a class of maps for which the, at low temperatures, most of the, map, the mass is near the critical orbit. And we can ensure that most of the time, the critical orbit is near a periodic cycle, is oscillating between one cycle and a second cycle. So it's oscillating in this way, we can get this divergence, and with being more careful, we get this sensitive dependence. And let me finish by saying, uh, comparing these two results. So as you can see in this construction, uh, we had to be very careful, so this potential had to be, uh, had to take the same value at two different places, and we had to uh, change this inductively, so at least in the way uh, we did it, uh, this is definitely an infinite co-dimension condition. So at least this type, the, the type we use to show this, uh, to prove this theorem, I would expect that they're very, very rare in the space of uh, circle expanding maps. There are many, many conditions. But here, uh, somehow, strangely, 
uh, this seems to be robust. So we can actually show that um, such F not form or contain a codimension two submanifold in the space of quadrat uh, quasi quadratic maps. And le let me just say quickly that one of the codimensions comes from the combinatorics of the map. And the second one comes from uh, the same as here. We need these two periodic orbits that where the, ma the critical point oscillates on to have the same Lyapunov exponent. Thank you. <laughs>